Okay, everybody, we're going to start now. I got the sign to, uh, to start. So come closer. Yeah, come, come sit here, man. Um, today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Joomla templating. I'm going to give you some clever tips and tricks that you can use uh, when you're creating websites and building templates. I'll first tell a little bit about myself. This is me, uh, Robin. I'm a designer and front-end developer and I work for a theme partner. That's why I built the, we, we uh, build and sell uh, Joomla templates and I create, uh, design and uh, develop those templates. Also, I work in another company where we uh, actually build websites for clients, for custom, uh, custom templates, custom websites for clients as well. Today, I wanna talk about the following four things. First thing is templates in general, then something about the index.php, uh, and then some uh, module alternative layouts and menu item alternative layouts. So first we got a template. Well, a template, as you know, is the design of, of your website. Um, it's all, gr all the graphical part, but there's also nowadays uh, more and more uh, code is also coming with your templates. Um, and templates in Joomla itself are getting better and smarter every time. Welcome. Uh, with every upgrade. And so I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do with them. So the next time when you're building a website and you've got a problem, um, try not to run to the Joomla extensions directory. But why are so many people going to the extensions directory? Well, for some people, no problem. Some people are just lazy, uh, and if they've got a problem, they just don't want to think about it, go to the extensions directory, type in their problem, and hope to find a solution. Um, other people think it's always better to use an extension for whatever you're doing. Uh, and some people don't know better. Some people don't know that there's actually, that you can do more with Joomla, the core Joomla, than, uh, than it's visible at first glance. Um, but why would I actually like to change that? Why would I want people to not go to the extensions directory? Because extensions could be unsafe. They're not unsafe, but they could be unsafe. The, um, the extension got uh, access to the whole Joomla system. So there's no sandbox. Um, and there's some other difficulties as well. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, we've had a website, we run it, we made it for a client. And um, all of a sudden, the client emails us and says, my website is broken. And it was really hacked because you, you'd go to the website, you'd see the website for five seconds. After five seconds, it redirected you to a porn site or whatever, so it was not good. So we tried to find out what the problem was because we've always updated Joomla and all the extensions and everything. Everything was up to date perfectly. So we couldn't find out what the problem was. Well, after some extensive research and using some tools, we found out that the problem was actually in some files that were located in the temporary folder, in the TMP folder, from an extension we installed. So even when you make sure you keep everything up to date, there's still a chance, for example, if you didn't empty your TMP folder, uh, that there's uh, a, a possible way for hackers to get in your website. Um, there was also, there's, there's also the question if you, always, um, if you always need an extension. For example, if you got XMAP uh, to create a sitemap and you just want to create a simple sitemap, you can do that as well by creating a module which shows your menu, because uh, then you've got a sitemap as well. Um, if you want the sitemap to show in a component area, you could use another core feature of Joomla, which is load position and place the module into an article. So then you still got your sitemap, got it all running. You, maybe you need to add some CSS to make it look, look nice, but you've got your sitemap without the need for an extension. Um, because most of the extensions that you use are probably too big for the problem you're trying to solve. Um, you might 
nine out of ten times you probably only need ten percent of the template of, of the extension, the, the use of the extension. Uh, but you're still loading all the code and you're still uh, paying for everything else, which is not really necessary. So some tricks you can do to your uh, index.php file first. Without an index.php, there's no template because um, there's just nothing to show. And hello, uh, your index.php can do more than just show your components and your modules. First thing to do is add a page class as your body class so you can have more control over your styling. So when do you want to do this? If you got a home page and you want the font to be larger on your home page or a column to be wider or a color to be different, uh, then it could be really useful to use your page class as your body class for your website. Um, you can also sh could also show or hide things on uh, different pages um, by using a, pa a body class, page class. Uh, although I wouldn't recommend hiding things because they're still being loaded. And uh, well, yeah, why should you hide it for people um, and not hide it for other people? So how do we how do we implement it? Well, it's, it should be. It looks like it's, it's going to be really easy because you got a page class, you fill in your page class, you, uh, you click save or save and close, you go to your website and your page class is being loaded. The only downside is that Joomla only loads it in uh, components and modules, so that's actually not deep enough in the code to have more control over your website. So we want to put it into the, uh, on the body element of the website. So this is what we do. Uh, slides will be online, so please don't type everything over. We need a little PHP to get the active menu and get the actual page class, and then we can uh, add it to the, to the body element. Um, and now we've got full control to do things like this with your CSS. So your, um, your font size on your uh, on your home page, because it has the class uh, home on your body, you make the font a little bit bigger. Your, your left columns are 20%, but on home, your left columns are 40%. Uh, maybe you want to do something uh, with, like, uh, create a class that's called list, and you've got more pages which have a list kind of view. And if you want to, uh, you could add the same class to different pages to make elements behave on a certain way other than on other pages. So that's, um, that's one class on one website in one template. What you could also do is create uh, a class or a style to use a template on different kinds of websites. So for example, if you've got a web shop and you're selling red, green, and blue cars, you might also want to split up your uh, web shop into three different web shops, a web shop that sells blue cars, green cars, and red cars, and you want your template to change with that. Of course, you could create a template, um, finish it, and then copy it and change all the colors from red to green or to blue. But if you've, if you've got to change anything in the, in the template itself, in the other files other than the, the style files, then you've got to do that three times uh, and upload it, upload it into Joomla again. So what but would be a better solution is to just um, create a uh, select box in, in the back end, and this is on the protostar template, where you can choose your style. So you've got the same uh, template, you install it on different servers, um, and you can choose a style. So this is very easy, uh, how you add it into your template details, and there's nothing fa fancy about it. You just say, uh, the label template style, um, and there's your styles, and of course you need unique values for that as well. And you can add as many options as you want, as many styles as you want. So now we've got just the two, but if you've got five different uh, subsites, you can add five here. And to add them to your website, to your index.php, you get a little piece of code, and then there's, uh, there's the echo of the, the, the template style. So this will show either style one or style two. And in your CSS, you can 
then uh, refer to, to them in the following, uh, following way. So you can add as many as, many as those kind of classes to your body element as you want. So this is, uh, this is parsed in the front end and you got a medium font and highlight first words, for example, where you can say that your uh, small font is that big, your medium font is, is just a regular 1M, and your large font is a little bit larger. But the fun thing is that if, you, if you're using this, you can also make sure that you, can, that, that you activate parts of JavaScript in your, uh, in your website. So all the, um, all the H3 tags within the body with highlight first words will do the following thing. So they will highlight the first words. Um, so you can, uh, you on different websites, you can, you, can use, uh, you can use this class because you want to show it on one website and you, want to, you just don't want to do it on another website. And you don't have to create different, uh, different templates for it. Um, then there's another thing I'd like to show you, which is not really an index.php thing, but I think it's really cool, so I'm just showing you. It's uh, activating JavaScript by changing your media queries in your CSS. Because if you're using media queries and you get your styles changing on a certain width, uh, and you've got your JavaScript uh, talking with that, with that as well, because it has to do s certain things on certain widths, then you have to do that twice. You could create something in JavaScript that says, if my screen gets wider or smaller than this, I want you to do the following thing. Um, but I, I find it nicer to do it like this, because you only have to change it once. Um, so what do I do? You put a z-index on your body, which is zero by standard zero and if the screen gets larger than 600 pixels I make sure the index the index is one and then in your CSS or in your JS you can check uh, whether this Z index is zero or one and uh, it will activate a part of JavaScript code so if you change this 600 to what 700 you don't have to do it in your JavaScript as well because automatically uh, it will just notice that the z-index will be 1 when the screen gets larger than 700 pixels. Now on alternative layouts. Um, they're actually just, well, template overrides, but maybe a little bit on steroids. And you've got, the, um, you've got alternative layouts in the following categories. You can make alternative layouts for components, for modules, for categories, for menu items, and you got multi-level within uh, categories as well. If you are going to work with them, um, it might be a little bit tricky at first, because if you create a override for a category to show uh, a cate category in a certain way, it's all perfectly fine, but when you create a menu item for to show this category, the, your override will stop working because it wants to be a menu item override then. Same goes for articles, you can just create uh, alternative layouts for your articles. Within your article, select the alternative layout, but as soon as you put that article, single article, in your menu, it won't work anymore because it's going to be um, a menu item override. Um, First, very quickly, a little uh, history thing showing how you do uh, a normal, regular m override, template override that we've been doing for, uh, for all the years. Um, so you find your, the file, the output file you want to change uh, in your installation components, um, and you look it up, you copy it, and you paste it into your template folder. So there's the same, same file now in your template folder. As you can see, the views and the TMPL folder are there and there. They're grayed out because you don't need them. You don't have to put them there. If you put them there, Joomla won't even recognize it anymore. So this, is, this has been always, well, all, since 1.5 at least, um, was, was in Joomla already. 
Well, then we're going to look at a module alternative layout. Uh, and that's an easy one because a module alternative layout can't ever change because you can't add a module as a menu item. So uh, no surprises here. And we're going to do that with an example. Say we'd like to create a slider on our front page, on our website, and we want a header, uh, intro text, a read more, and an image there. Now, and we've got three articles to show, and you want to go back and forth between, between the items with a little bit of JavaScript. Um, so if we want to build something like this, probably most of us will go to the Joomla extensions directory to find an article slider or a content slider to do this thing. But, welcome. But today, we're going to try to just use the Joomla core to create the same, uh, same slider without an extension. So, if we want to do that, we probably um, need to view a, component, an, um, a module, a module which shows the articles we want to show. Uh, so we could, we could take the new slash module or the, the um, uh, article, uh, the category layout, um, category layout module, because those are both fine uh, to show those articles in the way we want. Today we're going to use the uh, category layout. Um, and we've got some challenges because we, if we want to, to make this, we need to make sure that we load uh, a little bit of JavaScript and CSS. And we have to make sure that the images, the intro images will show because uh, in modules, the intro images are not being viewed at the moment. So we look the file up that we need. So it's a Joomla installation and in modules, mod, uh, articles category, TMPL folder, and your default PHP file. Copy it, paste it into your, um, your template. Again, in the HTML folder, mod articles category, and then a default, and we can skip the TNPL folder as well. If you want to make it an alternative layout instead of an override, you have to rename the file. So now you name it article slider, and it will see it as a, an alternative layout. Um, don't use an underscore in this name, because if you do that, Joomla will think that the file is um, a, a child of, of another uh, file, so, so it's a sub-level thing. We'll get to that later with the um, menu items. So, some of you might know this and have been using this, but this is a way in Joomla you can add scripts or, uh, or CSS to your, uh, to your page. Uh, and include it in the head. Because we need some JavaScript and we need some CSS to be loaded in to make sure that the slider is actually working. Um, so this is a way to include those files. But please make sure that you, that you know that loading more files takes more time, uh, takes more time, so your website gets slower as well. You, you actually want less requests for the server. So if you've got a JavaScript file that has just 20 lines, and if you've got some CSS that's just 10 lines, it might be wiser to just add them to your existing files instead of loading uh, a whole couple of new files. But if it's a large file and it's only needed on the, on the home page, you could think about just uh, doing this. And maybe if you got uh, an extension installed which will uh, combine all your files, then it's certainly not a problem as well. You can just use this. So if we want to, to add the, the things to make the slider a slider, you, you should add some classes like article slider so the JavaScript will know, okay, this is where the slider is going to be. Then all the list items get the class slider items so the, the JavaScript can, is, is able to talk with it. Then here's a little piece of code you can use to actually show the intro images into your module. Um, and it works for modules, and, and on there's some variations as well. On other places, it works a little bit different. Uh, but you can use it in, uh, in your components as well. And you can just get the images out of the, out of the article this, uh, this way. Um, and on the places where you see the dots, there's a lot of other Joomla code, of course. But it wouldn't really 
fit my slide, so uh, I just put those there. Uh, so now we also have to actually create the, uh, the module itself. So there's a couple of ways you can, you can show what we want to do. We could say that we only want to, s now it's featured articles says show, you can show them, hide them, or you can only show fe featured articles. So what we could do is just um, all the articles we want in the slider, uh, we could make them featured and put the featured articles in only. And we could put the count to three. Uh, another way to do it is to make a new category, which is called, I called uh, article slider articles, and I put all the articles I want into that category. The downside of that is that all the articles should be in that same category, so you can't um, get articles from all over your website in different categories to, to show on your front page. So then the featured articles would be better. Um, so that's in filtering options. Uh, and to actually activate the alternative layout, you have to go to uh, the advanced options and go to the alternative layout. And as you can see here, we've got uh, from the module itself, from Joomla, we've got the default.php file. And we've got from the test template that I was working on, you've got the article slider um, alternative layout. So if you pick that, um, then we've got our slider. And we didn't have to use any extension for that, so we don't have to keep it up to date. It's just there. Uh, it does what it has to do. Done. Then there's menu item alternative layouts. Um, and with a menu item alternative layout, you can create new uh, menu styles. So if you create a menu, uh, menu item right now, you can choose whether it's going to be a single article or a contact or newsfeed. And um, with an alternative layout for your menu items, you can create those things yourself. It's a very uh, powerful tool. Um, and to explain this, I, I've got another example. Um, we're going to try and um, create a user-friendly contact form. And we're going to try and put that on our website. So we get into Joomla, create a menu item. Or first, we uh, go to contacts, we create a contact. We go to, uh, to a menu, menu items, we create a menu item, single contact. Um, and this is what we get. Um, the contact form isn't even visible because it's behind the slider. Uh, and it's got very nice images from 1998 or something. Um, and there's a lot of things going on. But of course, we can change the settings a little bit and we can tweak it a little bit so that it looks more like we want it to. So the sliders are gone, uh, well the images are actually still there. Um, form is visible, but it looks like we are far way off creating an actual user-friendly contact form if we only have got the settings of, uh, of Joomla. So then the first thing we'll probably do if we see this is we go to the extensions directory and we go download or look for a form extension. So it could be a, a, a simple contact form extension or a, a larger one like chrono forms or RS forms. Um, and they are all really, really nice, but they might be a little bit too big for what we're trying to achieve here. If you get one of the bigger ones because half a year ago um, I actually with with my colleague Theo we built a uh, shopping cart with RS forms because the customer didn't want the uh, didn't want a full shopping cart and he wanted to use his existing articles to be able um, to put a button there that said that you can buy it so we used RS forms to build a simple shopping cart. That shows that you can do a lot with that extension. Um, and that's if, you, if you're only downloading or buying that extension to show a simple contact form, might not be the best idea to load all the, uh, the files needed for the extension to run. So we're going to we're going back to the form and we're gonna try to fix it with some CSS because that's also can get us uh, a long way. 
So we had some styles where hiding a couple of things, uh, changing the margin, changing font sizes, so everything will look a little bit more uh, normal. And uh, we're hiding an, an empty control group that was there in Joomla, which caused a, a, a large uh, white space, which was very unnecessary. And uh, the, the, the message field, we can make that a little bit bigger, so you can add some more information. So by just adding those couple of lines of CSS, it already well, looks a lot better, in my opinion. But there's still a lot of white space there. So it, it would be better if we, if we could uh, place the address next to the form to, to uh, well, align it out a little bit better and make it look a little bit nicer. So if we want to do that, we need to uh, edit the PHP files. Um, it'd be also nice to have some privacy policy somewhere and a message uh, on top saying what you can do with this, uh, with this form. So we're going back to the files, components, com contact, and we find our default.php file, copy and paste it into the template, call it userfriendly.php. Um, but to, to make it a menu item, you all also have to uh, copy and paste the XML file. So we got the default.xml, we copy and paste that one, and we give it the same name as the PHP file. So the PHP was called userfriendly.php, so the XML is called userfriendly.xml, and they are connected, and you can do your things with it. So one thing you do have to change, always have to change, is the, um, the title because otherwise, if you were looking at it in the back end, they would both be called the same. So that's kind of hard to figure out which one you need. Um, and well, you could change the message as well. Of course, you shouldn't do it like this. You should put it in your language files, but that would have not make it very clear for my presentation. So I just put it in like this. XML at the top, so if you go to your menu item, your contact menu item, and you change uh, your menu item type, you get your list and you can see that we've got a user-friendly contact form there as well now, uh, which we can choose. Then in the PHP we need to do some things because I'm, I was working within the protostar template, I've got all my bootstrap classes available so I wanted to place the address next to the form. You can do that very easily by just adding some spans. Um, and I added the contact, the address info there, um, a message why you should use this form, and at the bottom, um, some privacy policy. Uh, a, a, a nice way to actually find out where you have to start and end your divs uh, and open your elements without fucking up the whole layout is by simply just adding, for example, a word start, just the word start, and then where you think it's going to end, you add the word end. You check it out on your, on your website, and if you see a start, then all the information you want within the element, and then end, you'll go, well, then it's good. Uh, if the end is somewhere in the middle, you might want to change that. Um, later on, you can just uh, rename the start and ends to open and closing divisions. So we save this, um, and we check it out on the front page, and well, already that looks a little bit better. Well, actually, I think it looks quite a lot better than we had before. But there's still some things we want to change. For example, it's not really clear which one is the phone number or the fax, or maybe it's the mobile number, I don't even know. Um, because I got rid of the icons, so it's not really uh, really clear. Then there is send an email, all fields with, an, with a star are required, and then all the fields are required, so it might be better to just put, the, put a message there that says all fields are required instead of doing it like this and removing the stars. So if we want to do those things, we have to add the child elements of the menu item as well. So as you can see here, we've got default underscore address. Uh, so in this case, you 
you have to use your underscores to make sure that the address is a child of the default.php file. Copy it and you paste it and you call it user friendly underscore address uh, and it's, it's using the this file then. If this file is not available like uh, five minutes ago in the example, then Joomla will just use the default underscore address.php. So you don't have to override the whole thing because there's quite a lot of uh, children files in the, um, in the contact. You've got default address, of, yeah, default address, default form, you got quite a lot of them. You don't have to override them all, just the ones you need. And uh, if it can't find the your own one, it will take the Joomla default one. So we also have default form, uh, copy paste it, call it user friendly underscore form, and then it's working. So we changed those uh, couple of things. Now we got a telephone and a mobile and a website. Um, all fields are required and there's no stars anymore. Um, and this has just been done by, uh, well, using the alternative layout. Um, and it looks, well, I think a lot better than what we started with. That was it for now. A little bit short. Um, does anyone have a question about this? Anyone has something to say about it? <laughs> no? Yeah? Uh, you don't have any problems with um, JavaScript when you're using local iPhone or so. Sorry? If you use JavaScript, yeah? you don't have problems with the standard phones, the phones, and things like that. What do you mean exactly by having problems? Uh, I sometimes have some problems with JavaScript on some devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have any problems with, with uh, using JavaScript with uh, the other Windows device. N no. Well, yeah. Well, I, we, I run into loads of problems, but then you have to fix them, obviously. So <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's not going great every every time, first time you try something. But yeah. Well, no. Uh, but you mean by changing the JavaScript uh, simultaneously with the uh, yeah? There's some things um, in your JavaScript that might need a little more attention because um, if you've changed the Z index from zero to one uh, and you just resize your screen, then the, um, in some cases JavaScript will say, yeah, but I've been one and I've been uh, zero. So then both of the scripts might be working uh, and you have to get around that. But on an initial load, it always works. So it's not a problem if you're viewing it on your tablet or phone or anything. No. Well, so if I want to, uh, to, to, to leave you uh, some things today, it's, um, uh, please go have a try using overrides if you, if you haven't already and try to get more out of it than you've, uh, you've done so far. Because um, it's, it's, it's all really powerful and you can do a lot of stuff with it. Then try to get more out of the Joomla core. It's maybe it's a little bit a, a little bit the same, but it's not just just the template overrides. You can there's other stuff in the core that you can use uh, where you don't actually need an extension for. Uh, then the first point is, but leave the core alone. So don't start hacking around if it's not possible by using the Joomla techniques out of the core. Please get an extension. Uh, and don't try to hack the core, even if it's just one rule, because you, you just don't want to do that. And then don't always ignore extensions, because that's also really important. If you've got a website with uh, RS forms running already on it, because you've got a lot of forms, and you want to change your contact form by adding uh, a field that says uh, phone number, um, that is possible to do without uh, w just with overrides, but it's a little bit harder because you need to save the, 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 the field. You have to put in a database or email it as well, so it's a little bit m more harder work. So if you've if you got RS forms or Chrono forms or whatever running on your website already, please just use that extension because you'll be done very, very much quicker uh, and it's just easier and better that way. Then one more thing. Um, the next time when you're building a website, please try 
to use a maximum of just two front-end extensions on your next project and see if it works out for you. And please let me know uh, what your experiences are with it. All right, that was it. Thank you very much. <laughs>